<laughs> and then I had to think about that cow, that, that jack cow, you know. So that, that is, look at the cow, that, that cow is like my statin deficient. <laughs> and then you become a jacked cow. What's up guys, Fardin here from WolfenPhysique.com and I am my statin deficient. Oh sh- ah. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I- I- <laughs> I don't want to make you feel awkward. Maybe I did. So some of my wolves asked me about myostatin netty boosters. Can you make a video about myostatin netty boosters? And I thought by myself, myostatin. Wait, what was that again? <laughs> and then I had to think about that cow, that, that jack cow, you know. So that, that is, look at the cow. That that cow is like myostatin deficient. <laughs> And then you become a jacked cow. And there are like supplements out there, myostatin, netty, boosters, blah, blah, blah. So I did some research and this is very, very interesting, all right? This is a real thing, myostatin deficiency. I wish I was myostatin deficient, but. So if you're new here, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel, all right? I mean like, those vi these videos are very educational, you know? And uh, I think, I'm not very boring to listen to, right? So, can you maybe subscribe? I mean, like, it's like 50% is watching and 50% is subscribed. I mean, come on, that other 50%, come on, guys, come on, hit the subscribe button, there's just one button, and uh, hit the bell. But, uh, all right, let's get into this, it's pretty interesting. So, for those who do not know, what is my statin actually? Well, my statin is a growth factor that regulates the size of muscles and it all starts when you're still in your mommy's belly and that is where the development starts and it continues throughout your entire life so myostatin acts by inhibiting the growth of muscles it prevents them from growing too large so by inhibiting this function it offers a huge benefit for muscle growth so myostatin provides catabolism and catabolism is literally the process within your body of breaking down tissues and in this case proteins, your muscles. So your muscles are broken down for energy. And there is research in animals that shows that this myostatin gene is real and, it also, and also it affects. This abnormality can also occur in humans, funny enough. So, there's a case report, which is highly interesting. I, I really thought this one was really interesting. This is a case report of a German kid with a, a scary amount of muscle mass for his age. Uh, his weight at birth belonged to like the 25% of the heavy born childs of the world. So he seemed unusually muscular, which prompted researchers to look into the amount of IGF-1 testosterone and other uh, and more growth factors that are important for uh, anabolism, muscle growth. So funny enough, the researchers found that both scored in the normal values and could therefore not explain the muscle mass in this kid. So the so-called cross-sectional area, so the size of the cross-section of the muscles, they were considerably larger than in normal kids. So at the same time, the amount of Subcutaneous fat, the sub-Q fat, was also lower, so the fat under your skin. You also have visceral fat inside your organs, but we're talking uh, about under the skin. So if you have low body fat underneath your skin, you're shredded, bro. You have those uh, muscle fibers popping. But the uh, sub-Q fat was also uh, lower. So these signs came um, in line with the effects of a defective myostatin gene. The Germans therefore did research to see whether a defective myostatin gene was indeed the cause. And can you guess? This turned out to be the case. Unsurprisingly, the supplement industry was already printing myostatin blocker labels as soon as the first studies on myostatin were published. Not surprising, not surprising. Fitness industry, not surprising. But like I told you, uh, when you're inhibiting or lowering myostatin, it offers enormous um, possibilities for muscle growth and fat loss. The only question is whether and how supplements can achieve this. 
like I said in the last video, the word supplement means supplement. So you are supplementing something on top of your diet. It's not the end all be all, right? You may be wondering if a myostatin blocker supplement should be called a drug. So for many people, however, something can be a supplement once it can be purchased in a jar or pills or powder and does not require a doctor's prescription like HRT or uh, testosterone replacement therapy. Unlike a one-time injection with uh, injectable anabolic steroids, a jar of powder will be an easier choice for uh, <laughs> most people out there. Just look at the large number of people who are tempted by, ad for, by ads for supplements that act as uh, <laughs> anabolics but do not want to use anabolic steroids themselves. And I'm not recommending anabolic steroids, so just don't get that idea. If you can get more muscle growth by taking a pill or powder daily than by using a syringe and can stop daily without side effects and necessary after uh, tre treatments, then this would be the most popular supplement ever, ever. So the problem, however, is that oral agents, whether you call them supplements or drugs, often don't have the same effect as injected agents because of the extensive breakdown that can take place before they reach the bloodstream because they have to go to, to the digestive system, to the liver. So as far as I know, there are not really successful injectable myostatin blockers available. There are certain substances that we already consume daily that has a mild, a mild effect on my setting, a mild one, all right? I often look at the influence of a, sub, uh, of a certain supplement on, for example, testosterone, cortisol, and growth hormone as indicators if a supplement is worth it or not. So for my setting, this can also be viewed in this way more often. We may already be low, we may already be lowering myosetin in no unknowingly through some food supplements or medication. For example, cacao, cacao appears to have an inhibitory effect on myosetin, or rather the uh, epitectin in uh, I'm butchering it in cacao. So this effect is probably negligible in most cases, given a small and varying amount of epitectin in uh, cacao. So in this regard, there is still plenty of research to be done on myostatin. So there's just a lot we do not know. But you can bet that when injectable myostatin blockers are used for patients, the effect on muscle mass becomes as well known as that of steroids. Trust me. I'll say it right now. If that happens, in a couple of years from now, that would be crazy. But the supplement industry will list dozens of products that supposedly inhibit myosetin, just as testosterone boosters are currently being sold. The first of which I have yet to find that has really that really has a significant effect on testosterone. But much is said about bodybuilders and myosetin deficiencies, but there is actually also no proof for it. For example, Ronnie Coleman, maybe, maybe Ronnie Coleman has a myosetin deficiency, but that has never been investigated. Flax Wheeler has even said it, it about himself, but that has never been confirmed by research either. Big Ramey's trainer said that he thought Ramey has a myosetin deficiency, but that has not been proven in this case either. So it is possible but never proven in these people. So yeah, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you liked it. If you like it, like it. Subscribe if you're new, you're very welcome here. And uh, for all my coaching, hit the link in my description. And um, yeah, i see you next time. Like the video, hit the bell. Much love. See you next time.